I'm ready. Act two, Walsh Burgers Nucked, which means the night of the witches. Nick re-enters. I guess she's all right. She really shouldn't drink. She's pretty uh, slim-hipped, as you'd have it. Uh, I'm really very sorry. Where's my little yummy yum? Where's Martha? She's making coffee in, in the kitchen. She gets sick quite easily. Martha? Oh, no. Martha hasn't been sick a day in her life, uh, unless you count the time she spends in the rest home. No, no. My wife. My wife gets sick quite easily. Your wife is Martha. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, she really doesn't spend any time in a rest home. Your wife? No, yours. <gasps> oh, mine. No, no, she doesn't. Um, I would. I mean, if I were her, she, I would, but I'm not. And so I don't. I'd like to, though. Gets pretty bouncy around here sometimes. Yes, I'm sure. Well, you saw an example of it. I try not to... Get involved, hmm? is that right? Yes, that's right. I'd imagine not. I find it embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> you do, huh? Yes, really, quite. Yes, really, quite. <laughs> now that's look... Disgusting. It, now, look, I didn't have anything to... Disgusting. Do you think I like having that, whatever it is, ridiculing me, tearing me down in front of you? Do you think I care for it? Well, no. I don't imagine you care for it at all. Oh, you don't imagine it, huh? No, I don't. I don't imagine you do. Your sympathy disarms me. Your, your compassion makes me weep. Large, salty, unscientific tears. I just don't see why you feel you have to subject other people to it. I? If you and your wife want to go at each other, like a couple of... I? Why I want to? Animals. I don't see why you don't do it when there aren't any... <laughs> oh, you smug, self-righteous little... Can it, mister? Scientist. I've never hit an older man. Oh, hmm. you just hit younger men and uh, children, women, birds. <laughs> well, well, you're quite right, of course. It isn't the, uh, the prettiest spectacle, seeing a couple of middle-aged types hacking away at each other, all red in the face and winded, missing half the time. Oh, you two don't miss. You two are pretty good. Impressive. Hmm. And the impressive things impress you, don't they? You're... Um, Easily impressed, sort of a, uh, a pragmatic idealism. No, it's that sometimes I can admire things that I don't admire. Now, flagellation isn't my idea of a good times, but... But, but you can admire a good flagellator, a real pro. Uh-huh, yeah. Hmm, your wife uh, throws up a lot, eh? I didn't say that. Said she gets sick quite easily. Oh, well, by sick, I thought you meant. Well, it's true. She she does throw up a lot. Once she starts, there's there's practically no stopping her. I mean, she'll go right on for hours. Not all the time, but regularly. Ah, huh, you can uh, tell time by her, huh? Just about. Drink? Sure. 
I married her because she was pregnant. Oh. But you said you didn't have any children. When I asked you, you said... She wasn't really. It was a, it was a hysterical pregnancy. She blew up and then she went down. And um, while she was up, you uh, married her. And then she went down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, bourbon is right? Uh, yes, bourbon. When I was 16 and going to prep school uh, during the uh, Punic Wars, a bunch of us used to go into New York on the first day of vacations before we um, fanned out to our homes. And in the evening, this bunch of us um, used to go to this gin mill owned by the gangster father of one of us, for, for that was during the, uh, the Great Experiment or Prohibition, as it is more frequently called. And it was a, a bad time for the liquor lobby, but a fine time for the crooks and the cops. And we would go to this um, gin mill and we would drink with the grown-ups and listen to the jazz. And one time... Uh, in the bunch of us, there was this, um, this boy who was 15, and he, he had killed his mother uh, with a shotgun some years before, accidentally, completely accidentally, without even a, a conscious motivation, unconscious motivation, I have no doubt, no doubt at all. And this one evening, um, this boy went with us, and we ordered our drinks, and when it, when it came his turn, he said, I have Bergen. Give me some Bergen, please. Bergen and water. Well, well, we we all laughed. He was um, blonde and he had the the face of a cherub, and we all laughed. And his cheeks went red, and the colour rose in his neck. And the uh, the assistant crook who had taken our order uh, told people at the next table what the boy had said, and then they laughed. And then more people were told, and the laughter grew, and more and more laughter, and. No one was laughing more than us and none of us more than the boy who had shot his mother. And soon everyone in the gin mill knew what the laughter was about and everyone started ordering Bergen and laughing when they ordered it. And soon, of course, the laughter became less general, but it did not subside entirely for a very long time. For always at this table or that, someone would order Bergen and a new area of laughter would arise. <laughs> we drank free that night. We were bought champagne by the management, by the gangster father of one of us. And of course, we, uh, we all suffered the next day, each of us alone on his train away from New York, each of us with a, with a grown-up's hangover. It was the, um, the uh, grandest day of my uh, youth. Thank you. What, what happened to the boy? The boy who had shot his mother. I won't tell you. All right. The following summer, on a country road, with his learner's permit in his pocket and his father on the front seat to his right, he swerved the car to avoid a porcupine and drove straight into a large tree. No. He was not killed, of course. And in the hospital, when he was conscious and out of danger, when they told him that his father was dead, he began to laugh, I've been told, and his laughter grew and he would not stop. And it was not until after they jammed a needle in his arm, not until after that, until his consciousness slipped away from him, that his laughter subsided, stopped. And when he was recovered from his injuries enough so that he could be moved without damage, should he struggle, he was put in an asylum. That was uh, 30 years ago. Is he still there? Oh, yes. And I'm told that for all these 30 years, he has not uttered one sound. Martha! Martha! I, I told you. She's making coffee. Ah, for your hysterical wife who goes up and down. Went up and down. Went? No more? No more. Nothing. 
Uh, the saddest thing about men, well, um, no, one of the saddest things about men is the way they age, some of them. Do you know what it is with insane people? Do you? The quiet ones? No. They don't change. They don't grow old. They must. Well, well, eventually, probably, yes, but, but they don't. In, in the usual sense, they maintain a, um, a, a uh, firm-skinned serenity. The, um, the, the underuse of everything leaves them quite whole. Are you recommending it? Oh, no. Some things are sad, though. But you just got to buck up and face them, that's all. Buck up. Martha mm, doesn't have hysterical pregnancies. My wife had one. Yes. <laughs> Martha doesn't have pregnancies at all. Well, no. I, I don't imagine so. Now, do you have any other kids? Do you have any daughters or anything? <laughs> do we have any? Any what? Do you have any? I mean, do you have only one kid? Uh, your son. Oh, no, no, just one. One boy, our son. Well, that's nice. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, well, well. Well, he's a, he's a comfort, a beanbag. A what? A beanbag, beanbag. You wouldn't understand. Bean bag. I heard you. I didn't say I was deaf. I said I didn't understand. You didn't say that at all. I meant I was implying I didn't understand. For Christ's sake. You're getting testy. I'm sorry. All I said was our son, the apple of our three eyes, Martha being a cyclops, our son is a beanbag and you get testy. I'm sorry. It's late. I'm tired. I've been drinking since nine o'clock. My wife is vomiting. There's been a lot of screaming going on around here. And so you're testy, naturally. Don't um, worry about it. Anyone who comes here ends up uh, getting testy. It's expected. Don't be upset. I'm not upset. You're testy. Yes. <sighs> I'd like to uh, set you straight about something uh, while the little ladies are out of the room. I'd like to set you straight about what Martha said. I don't make judgments. So there's no need really, unless you... Well, I want to. I know you uh, don't like to become involved. I know you like to... Uh, preserve your scientific detachment in the face of, uh, for lack of a better word, life and all. But still, I want to tell you. I'm a guest. You go right ahead. <laughs> well, thanks. Now that makes me feel all warm and inside. Well, if you're going to get... Hey. If you're going to start that kind... Oh, sorry, Nick... You're going to start that kind of stuff again. Hark! Forest sounds. Huh? Animal noises. Hey. Oh. Well, here's Mercy. We're sitting up, we're having coffee, and we'll be back here. Oh, uh, is there anything I should do? No, you just stay here and listen to George's side of things. Bore yourself to death. Monstre. Cochon. Bethe. Canaille. Canaille. Oh, sorry, you say that. <laughs> Canaille. Bethe. Yeah. You two types amuse yourselves. We'll be in. You clean up the mess you made, George? Uh, no, Martha. I did not clean up the mess I made. I've been trying for years to clean up the mess I made. Have you? Hmm? 
Have you been trying for years? Hmm. Accommodation, malleability, adjustment. Those uh, do seem to be in the order of things, don't they? Don't try to put me in the same class with you. Ho, ho, ho. No, of course not. Um, things are simpler with you. You marry a woman because she's uh, all blown up while I, in my uh, clumsy old-fashioned way... There was more to it than that. Sure. I bet she had money, too. <sighs> Yes. Yes? Yes? Oh, you mean I was right? I hit it? Well, you see... It was... My God, what archery! First try, too! How about that? You see, there was... Yes? To compensate. Yes? Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're totally mixed up. Uh, <laughs> My God, what archery first try to? How about that? You see, then that's you. Uh, there, were other there were other things. Yes. To uh, compensate. Yes. <laughs> there always are. No, no, no. I'm sure there are. I didn't mean to be um, flip. Um, there are always compensating factors, as in the case of Martha and myself. Now, I'm um, on the surface of it. We sort of grew up together, you know. It looks to be a kind of knockabout drag affair on the surface of it. We knew each other from, oh God, I don't know, when we were six or something. But somewhere back there at the beginning of it, right when I first came to New Carthage, back then... I'm sorry. Hmm? Oh, 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 no, 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 I'm sorry. No, it, it's, it's all right. No, no, you go ahead. No, please. No, I insist. You're a guest. You go first. Well, it seems a little silly now. Nonsense. <laughs> but if you were six, um, she must have been four or something? Maybe I was eight. She was six. We, we used to play doctor. Huh, that's a good, healthy, heterosexual beginning. <laughs> yep. Uh, the scientist, eh? even then. Yeah, and it was uh, it was always taken for granted, you know, by by our families and by us too, I guess. And so we did. Did what? We got married. When you were eight? No, no, of course not. Much later. I wondered. I wouldn't say there was any particular passion between us, even at the beginning. Of our marriage, I mean. Well, certainly uh, no surprise. No earth-shaking discoveries uh, after doctor and all. No. Everything's all pretty much the same anyway, in spite of what they say about Chinese women. What is that? Let me freshen you up. Oh, thanks. After a while, you don't get any drunker, do you? <laughs> well, well, you do. But it's different. Everything slows down. You get sodden. Unless you can upchuck like your wife, then you can sort of start all over again. Everybody drinks a lot here in the East. Everybody drinks a lot in the Middle West, too. Yeah, we drink a lot in this country, and I, I suspect we'll be drinking a great deal more if we survive. We should be Arabs or Italians. The Arabs don't drink. And the Italians don't get drunk much, except on religious holidays. We should live on Crete or something. <laughs> that, of course, would make us Cretans. So it would. Uh, tell me about your wife's money. Why? Well, don't then. What do you want to know about my wife's money for? Huh? Well, I thought it would be nice. No, you didn't. Uh, all right. Um, I want to know about your wife's money because, well, um, because I'm fascinated by the methodology, by the uh, pragmatic accommodation by which you, uh, wave of the future boys, are going to take over. 
You're starting in again. Am I? No, I'm not. Look, <clears throat> Martha has money too. I mean, her father's been robbing this place blind for years and... No, he hasn't. He has not. He hasn't? No. Huh. Very well. Martha's father has, um, <clears throat> has not been robbing this place blind for years and Martha does not have any money, okay? We were talking about my wife's money, not yours. Okay, talk. No. My father-in-law was a man of the Lord and he was very rich. Hmm. What faith? He, my father-in-law, was called by God when he was six or something and he started preaching and he baptized people and he saved them and he traveled around a lot and he became pretty famous uh, not like some of them but he became pretty famous and when he died he had a lot of money god's money no his own what happened to god's money he spent god's money and he saved his own he built hospitals and he sent off mercy ships and he brought the outhouses indoors and he brought the people outdoors into the sun and he built three churches or whatever they were and two of them burned down and, and he ended up pretty rich. Well, I think that's very nice. Yes. <laughs> and so my wife's got some money. But not God's money. No, her own. Well, I, I think that's very nice. <laughs> Martha's, um, Martha's got money because Martha's second wife, uh, Martha's father's second wife, not Martha's mother, but after Martha's mother died, <coughs> was a very old lady with warts who was very rich. She was a witch. She was a good witch. And she married the white mouse with the <laughs> tiny red eyes. And he, he must have uh, nibbled her warts or something like that because she went up in a puff of smoke almost immediately. Poof! 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 And all that was left, apart from some wart medicine, was a big fat will. A peach pie with some for the township of New Carthage, some for the college, some for Martha's daddy, and just this much for Martha. Maybe, maybe my father-in-law and the witch with the warts should have gotten together because he was a mouse too. He was? Sure. He was a church mouse. <laughs> 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 Your wife never mentioned, never mentioned a stepmother. No, maybe it isn't true. Well, then maybe it is. Might be, might not. Well, I think your story's a lot nicer about your pumped up little wife and your father-in-law who was a priest. He was not a priest. He was a man of God. <laughs> yes. And my wife wasn't pumped up. She blew up. Yes, yes. Get things straight. I'm sorry, I will. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm okay. You realize, of course, um, that I've been drawing you out on this stuff, uh, not because I'm interested in your terrible lifehood, but only because um, you represent a direct and pertinent threat to my livelihood, and I want to get the goods on you. Sure. Sure. I mean, I'm... Uh, I've warned you. You stand warned. I stand warned. <laughs> it's you sneaky types worry me the most. You know, you ineffectual sons of bitches. You are the worst. Yes, yes, we are. Sneaky. An elbow in your steely blue eye. A knee in your solid gold groin. We're the worst. Yep. Well, I'm glad you don't believe me. Um, I know you've got history on your side and all. Uh-uh, you've got history on your side. I've got biology on mine. History, biology. I know the difference. You don't act it. No, I thought we'd decided that you'd uh, take over the history department first before you uh, took over the whole works, you know, sort of a step at a time. Uh, nah. 
what I thought I'd do is I'd sort of insinuate myself generally, play around for a while, find all the weak spots, shore them up, but with my own nameplate on them, become sort of a fact, and then turn into a, a what? Um, an inevitability? Exactly, an inevitability. You know, take over a few courses from the older men, start some special groups for myself, plow a few pertinent wives. Ah, now, that's it. You can take over all the courses you want to and get as much of the young elite together in the gymnasium as you like, but until you start plowing pertinent wives, you really aren't working. The way to a man's heart is through his wife's belly, and don't you forget it. Yeah, I know. And uh, the women around here are no better than puntas, you know, those South American ladies of the night. You know what they do in, um, in South America, in Rio, the puntas? Do you know? They hiss like geese. They stand around in the street and they hiss at you like a bunch of geese. Gangle. Hmm? Gangle. Gangle of geese. Not bunch, gangle. Well, if you're going to get all cute about it, all ornithological, it's um, gaggle, not gangle, gaggle. Gaggle? Not gangle? <laughs> yes, gaggle. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, um, they stand around on the street and they hiss at you like a bunch of geese. All the faculty wives downtown in New Carthage in front of the A&P um, hissing away like a bunch of geese. That's the way to power. Plow them all. I'll bet you're right. Well, I am. And I'll bet your wife's the biggest goose in the gangle, isn't she? Her father president and all. <laughs> you bet your historical inevitability she is. Yes, sir. -y. Well, now, I just better get her off in a corner and mount her like a goddamn dog, huh? Why, you'd certainly better. You know, I almost think you're serious. <laughs> no, baby. You almost think you're serious. And it scares the hell out of you. Me? Yes, you. You're kidding. I wish I were. I'll give you some good advice if you'd want good to. Good advice? From you? Oh, boy. <laughs> you haven't learned yet. Take it wherever you can get it. Listen to me now. Come off it. I'm giving you some good advice now. Good God. There's quicksand here. You'll be dragged down just as... Oh, boy. Jeez. Well, you know it. Sucked down. You disgust me. You disgust me on principle, and you're a smug son of a bitch, personally. But I'm trying to give you a survival kit. Do you hear me? I hear you. You come in loud. All right. Hey, honey. All right. Okay, you want to play it by ear, right? Everything's going to work out anyway, because the timetable's history, right? Right. Right, you just tend to your knitting, Grandma. I'll be okay. God, I've tried. I've tried to teach you to... to make contact? Yes. Communicate? Yes, exactly. Oh, that is touching. That is downright moving. That's what it is. Up yours. Hmm? You heard me. You take the trouble to construct a civilization, to, to build a society based on the principles of, of principle. You endeavor to make communicable sense out of natural order, morality, 
out of the natural, unnatural disorder of man's mind. You make government and art and you realise that they are, they must be both the same. You bring things to the saddest of all points, to the point where there is something to lose. And then all at once, through all the music, through all the sensible sounds of men building, attempting, up comes the Dies Irae. And what is it? What does the trumpet sound? Up yours. I suppose there's um, justice in it after all these years. <laughs> Up yours. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. A little shaky, but on our feet. Goody. What? Oh. Oh, hi, Annie. You better? A little bit, dear. I'd better sit down, though. Sure, come on, you sit by me. Thank you, dear. Touching, touching. Well, aren't you going to apologize? For what, Martha? For making the little lady throw up, what else? I did not make her throw up. You most certainly did. I did not. No, now, no. Well, who do you think did? Sexy over there? You think he made his own little wife sick? Well, you make me sick. That's different. Uh, no, now I, I throw up. I mean, I get sick occasionally all by myself without, without any reason. Is that a fact? You're, you're delicate, honey. I've always done it. Like Big Ben. Watch it. And the doctors say there's nothing wrong with me organically, you know? Of course there isn't. Why, just before we got married, I developed appendicitis, or everybody thought it was appendicitis, but it turned out to be, it was a... <laughs> a false alarm. Get me a drink. George makes everybody sick. When our son was just a little boy, he used to... Don't, Martha. He used to throw up all the time because of George. I said don't. It got so bad that whenever George came into the room, he'd start writing retching. And... The real reason our son used to throw up all the time was wife and lover. Nothing more complicated than that he couldn't stand you fiddling at him all the time, breaking into his bedroom with your kimono flying, fiddling at him all the time with your lick of breath on him and your hands all over his... Yeah, and I suppose that's why he ran away from home twice in one month too. Twice in one month, six times in one year. Our son ran away from home all the time because Martha here used to corner him. I never cornered the son of a bitch in my life. <laughs> he used to run up to me when I'd get home and he'd say, uh, Mama's always coming at me. That's what he'd say. Liar. Well, that's the way it was. You were always coming at him. I thought it was very embarrassing. If you thought it was so embarrassing, what are you talking about it for? Dear. Yeah, thanks, sweetheart. I, uh, I didn't want to talk about him at all. I would have been perfectly happy not to discuss the whole subject. I never want to talk about it. Yes, you do. When we're alone, maybe. We're alone. Uh, uh, no, love, we've got guests. You sure have. Could I have... A little brandy? I think I'd like a little brandy. You think you should? Oh, yes. Yes, dear. Ah, sure, fill her up. Honey, I don't think you... It will steady me, dear. I feel a little unsteady. Oh, hell, you, you can't walk steady on half a bottle. You've got to do it right. Yes. I love brandy. I really do. Good for you. Well, if you think it's a good idea. I know what's best for me, dear. Yes, 
sure you do. Oh, goody, thank you. Of course I do, dear. Mm, I used to drink brandy. You used to drink burgundy too. Shut up, Martha. Oops. <laughs> huh? Nothing, nothing. You two men have it out while we were gone? George tell you his side of things? He bring you to tears, huh? Well, uh, no. Now, now, what we did, actually, uh, was we, we sort of uh, danced around. Oh, yeah? Cute. Oh, I love dancing. He didn't mean that, honey. Well, I didn't think he did. Two grown men dancing. Heavens! You mean he didn't star in on how he would have amounted to something if it hadn't been for Daddy? How his high moral sense wouldn't even let him try to better himself? No. Oh. And he didn't run on about how he tried to publish a goddamn book and Daddy wouldn't let him. A book? No. Please, Martha. Book? What book? Please, just a book. Just a book? Please, Martha. Well, I guess you didn't get the whole sad story. What's the matter with you, George? You given up? No. No, it's, it's just I've got to figure out some new way to fight you, Martha. Guerrilla tactics, maybe. Internal subversion, I don't know, something. Well, you figure it out and you let me know when you do. All right, love. Why don't we dance? I'd love some dancing. Hey. I would. I'd love some dancing. Hey. I want some. I want some dancing. All right. For heaven's sake, we'll have some dancing. Oh, I'm so glad. I just love dancing, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Gee. Gee. I dance like the wind. Yeah? Uh, Martha had her um, daguerreotype in the paper once, about uh, 25 years ago. Seems she took second prize in one of them seven-day dancing contest things biceps or bulging holding up her partner will you put a record on and shut up certainly love how are we going to work this mixed doubles well you certainly don't think i'm going to dance with you do you no not with him around that's for sure and uh, and not with twinkle toes here either i'll dance with anyone i'll dance by myself Honey? I dance like the wind. All right, kiddies. Choose up and hit the sack. Anyway, you know the song. <laughs> yes. Honey. The um dee 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 wonderful. Honey. All right, George, cut that out. Dum di da da, dum di da da da. We cut it out, George. What, Martha? What? Honey. Cut it out, George. What? All right, you son of a bitch. What did you say, love? You son of a. You stopped. Why did you stop? Honey. Stop that. I thought it was fitting, Martha. Oh, you did, huh? You're always at me when I'm having a good time. I'm sorry, honey. Just leave me alone. Hmm. Well, um, why don't you choose, Martha? Martha's going to run things. The little lady is going to lead the band. I like to dance and you don't want me to. I like you to dance. Just leave me alone. Martha's going to put on some rhythm she understands. Sacre de pratimps, maybe. 
<laughs> Hi, sexy. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Choose it, Martha. Do your stuff. You're damn right. You want to dance with me, Angel Tits? Uh, what did you call my wife? <laughs> oh, boy. No, if I can't do my interpretive dance, I don't want to dance with anyone. I'll just sit here and... Okay, stuff. let's go. Huh? Oh. Hi. Hi. We'll just sit here and watch. That's right. Hey, you are strong, aren't you? Uh-huh. I like that. Yeah, they're dancing like they've danced before. It's a familiar dance. They both know it. Don't be shy. I'm not. It's a very old ritual. Monkey nipples. Old as they come. I, I don't know what you mean. I like the way you move. I like the way you move, too. They like the way they move. That's nice. I'm surprised George didn't give you his side of things. Aren't they cute? No, he didn't. That surprises me. Does it? Yeah, he usually does when he gets the chance. Well, what do you know? It's really a very sad story. You have ugly talents, Martha. Is it? It would make you weep. Hideous gifts. Is that so? Don't encourage her. Encourage me. Go on. I warn you, don't encourage her. He warns you, don't encourage me. I heard him. Tell me more. Well, Georgie boy had lots of big and big ambitions, in spite of something funny in his past. Martha! Georgie boy here turned into a novel, his first attempt and also his last. Hey, I rhymed, I rhymed. <laughs> I'm warning you, Martha. Yeah, you rhymed. Go on, go on. But Daddy took a look at George's novel. You're looking for a punch in the mouth, you know that, Martha. Do tell. And he was very shocked by what he read. He was? Yes, he was. A novel all about a naughty boy child. I will not tolerate this. Oh, can it? <laughs> naughty boy child who... Uh, who killed his mother and his father dead. Stop it, Martha. And Daddy said, look here, I will not let you publish such a thing. That's it. The dancing's over. That's it. Go on now. What do you think you're doing, huh? Violence, violence. And Daddy said, look here, kid. You don't think for a second I'm going to let you publish this crap, do you? Not on your life, baby. Not while you're teaching here. You publish that goddamn book and you're out on your ass. Desist! Desist! <laughs> <laughs> Desist! <laughs> oh, violence! Violence! Why, the idea, a teacher at a respected this conservative, conservative institution like this in a town like New Carthage, publishing a book like that. If you respect your position here, young man, young whippersnapper, you'll just withdraw that manuscript. I will not be made mock of. He will not be made mock of. <laughs> For Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> The game is over! Imagine such a thing. A book about a boy who murders his mother and kills his father and pretends it's all an accident. An accident! <laughs> hey, wait a minute. And you want to know the clincher? 
You want to know what big, brave Georgie said to Daddy? No, 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 no! Wait a minute now. Georgie said, but Daddy, I mean, <laughs> but sir, it isn't a novel at all. Not a novel? No, sir, it isn't a novel at all. You will not say this. Hey. The hell I won't. Keep away from me, you bastard. No, sir, this isn't a novel at all. This is the truth. This really happened to me. I'll kill you! Hey! Violence! Violence! Oh. <laughs> it happened to me! To me! You satanic bitch! Stop that! Stop that! Violence! Violence! The other three struggle. George's hands are on Martha's throat. Nick grabs him, tears him from Martha, throws him on the floor. George on the floor, Nick over him, Martha to one side, her hand on her throat. That's enough now. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> okay. All right. All right. Very quiet now. We will all be very quiet. Murderer. Murderer. Okay, now. That's enough. Well, uh, that's one game. What shall we do now? Huh? Hmm? Oh. Come on, let's think of something else. We've played Humiliate the Host. We've gone through that one. What shall we do now? Ah, oh, look, we should... Oh, look. Oh, look. I mean, come on, we must know other games. College types like us, that can't be the limit of our vocabulary, can it? I think maybe... It... Let's see now, um, what else can we do? There are other games. Um, how about, how about, um, how about Hump the Hostess? Hmm? How about that? How about Hump the Hostess? You want to play that one? You want to play Hump the Hostess? Hmm? Hmm? I'm down now. <laughs> or is that for later? You know, mount her like a goddamn dog. Hump the hostess. Just shut up, will you? Oh, you don't want to play that now, huh? You want to save that game for later? Well, um, what'll we play now? We've got to play a game. Portrait of a man drowning. Hmm, I am not drowning. You told me to shut up. I'm sorry. No, you're not. I'm sorry. I've got it. I'll tell you what game we'll play. We've done with Humiliate the Host, this round anyway. We've done with that and we, we don't want to play Hump the Hostess yet. Not yet. So, so I know what we'll play. We'll play a round of Get the Guests. How about that? How about a little round of Get the Guests? Jesus, George. Book I dropper, child mentioner. I don't like these games. Yeah. I think maybe we've had enough of games now. now I... Oh, no. Oh, no, no. We haven't. We've only had one game. Now we're going to have another. You can't fly on one game. I think maybe... <clears throat> Silence. Now, um, how are we going to play Get the Guests? Oh, for God's sake, George. You be quiet. I wonder. I wonder. Okay. Well, Martha, in her indiscreet way, well, not really indiscreet because Martha is a naive at heart, 
Anyway, uh, Martha told you all about my first novel. True or false? Hmm? I mean, true or false that there ever was such a thing. Ha! But Martha told you about it. My first novel. My memory book, which I'd sort of preferred she hadn't, but hell, that's blood under the bridge. But, but what she didn't do, what Martha didn't tell you about, is she didn't tell you about my second novel. No, you didn't know about that one, did you, Martha? About my second novel? True or false? True or false? No. No. Hmm. Well, it's an allegory, really, probably. But it can be read as straight, cosy prose. And it's all about a nice young couple who come out of the Middle West. It's bucolic, you see. And this nice young couple come out to the Middle West and he's blonde and about 30 and he's a scientist, a teacher, a scientist. And his mouse is a wifey little type and she gargles brandy all the time. And Just a minute here. And they got to know each other when they were only teensy little types. And they used to hide under the vanity table and poke around. And I said, just a minute. This is my game. You played yours, you people. This is my game. I want to hear the story. I love stories. George, for heaven's sake. And, and <clears throat> Mousy's father was a holy man, see? And he sort of ran a travelling clip joint based on Christ and all those girls. And he took the faithful, that's all. Just took them. This is familiar. No kidding. And uh, he died eventually, Mousy's pa. And they pried him open and all sorts of money fell out. Jesus money, Mary money, loot. I've heard this story before. Money. But that's all in the backwash, eh? in the early part of the book. Anyway, Blondie and his Frau out of the Plain States came. <laughs> Very funny, George. Oh, thank you. And uh, settled in a town just like Nouveau Carthage here. I don't think you'd better go on, mister. Do you not? No. I... I don't think you'd better. I love familiar stories. They're the best. How right you are. But Blondie was in disguise, really. All got up as a teacher because his baggage ticket had bigger things writ on it. H-I-H. -H. Historical inevitability. There's no need for you to go any further. Now, <clears throat> let them go on. We shall. And he had this baggage with him, and part of this baggage was in the form of his mouse. We don't have to listen to this. Why not? Your bride has a point. And one of the things nobody could understand about Blondie was his baggage, his mouse. I mean, here he was, Pan Kansas swimming champion or something, and he had this, this mouse of whom he was solicitous to a point that faileth human understanding, given that she was a sort of a simp in the long run. This isn't fair of you. Perhaps not. Well, like I said, his mouse, she uh, pooted brandy modestly and spent half her time in the up chuck. I know these people. Do you? But she was a money baggage, amongst other things. Godly money ripped from the golden teeth of the faithful, a pragmatic extension of the big dream, and she was put up with. I don't like this story. Please, please don't. Maybe you'd better stop, George. And she was put up with. Stop! <laughs> please, please don't. Big baby. George. And, uh, oh, oh, uh, we get a flashback here to how they got married. No. Yes. Why? How they got married. Well, uh, how they got married is this. The mouse 
got all puffed up one day and she went over to Blondie's house and she stuck out her puff and she said, look at me. I don't like this. Stop it. Look at me. I'm all puffed up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, said Blondie. And so they were married. And so they were married. And then? And then? What? And then what? No. No. And then the puff went away like magic. Puff. Jesus. God. The puff went away. Poof. Honey. I didn't mean to. Honestly, I didn't mean to. You, you told them. Honey, I didn't, I didn't mean to. You told them, you told them, oh, oh no, no, you, you couldn't have told them, oh no. Oh, honey, I, I didn't mean to. Oh no. Honey, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. And that's how you play Get the Guests. I'm going to, I'm going to be sick. Naturally. Honey. Leave me alone. I'm going to be sick. God almighty. The patterns of history. You um, shouldn't have done that at all. I um, hate hypocrisy. That was cruel and vicious. Oh, she'll get over it. And damaging. She'll recover. Damaging to me. To you? To me. To you? Yes. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. By God, you've got to have a swine to show you where the truffles are. <laughs> well, you just rearrange your alliances, boy. You just pick up the pieces where you can. You just look around and make the best of things. You just scramble back up on your feet. Go look after your wife. Well, yeah, go pick up the pieces and plan some new strategy. You're going to regret this. Probably. I regret everything. I mean, I'm going to make you regret this. Hmm. No doubt. Acute embarrassment, eh? I'll play the charades like you've got them set up. I'll play in your language. I'll be what you say I am. You are already. You just don't know it. No. No, not really. But I'll be it. Mister, I'll show you something come to life you'll wish you hadn't set up. Go clean up the mess. You just wait, mister. Very good, George. Thank you, Martha. Really good. I'm glad you liked it. I mean, you did a good job. You really fixed it. <laughs> it's the most life you've shown in a long time you bring out the best in me baby yeah pygmy hunter pygmy you're really a bastard i i yeah you baby if quarterback there is a pygmy you've certainly changed your style what are you after now giants you make me sick Perfectly all right for you. I mean, you can make your own rules. You can go around like a hopped up Arab, slashing away at everything in sight, scarring up half the world if you want to, but someone else try it? No, sir. You miserable. Why, baby, I did it all for you. I thought you'd like it, sweetheart. It's sort of to your taste, blood, carnage and all. Why, I thought you'd get all excited, sort of heave and pant and come running at me, your Melons bobbing. You've really screwed up, George. Oh, for God's sake, Martha. I mean it. You really have. You can sit there in that chair of yours. You can sit there with the gin running out of your mouth 
and you can humiliate me. You can tear me apart all night. And that's perfectly all right. That's okay. You can stand it. I cannot stand it. You can stand it. You married me for it. That is a desperately sick lie. Don't you know it even yet? Oh, Martha. My arm has gotten tired whipping you. You're mad. For 23 years. You're deluded, Martha, you're deluded. It's not what I wanted. I thought at least, at least you were onto yourself. I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm onto myself. Oh, no, no, no. You're sick. I'll show you how sick. All right, Martha, you're going too far. I'll show you how sick. I'll show you. Stop it. Now stop it. I'll show you who's sick. Boy, you're really having a field day, huh? Well, I'm going to finish you before I'm through with you. You and the quarterback, you both going to finish me? Before I'm through with you, you'll wish you died in that automobile, you bastard. And you wish you'd never mentioned our son. You. Now I said I warned you. I'm impressed. I warned you not to go too far. I'm just beginning. Well, I'm numbed enough. I mean, I don't mean by liquor. Though that's part of the process. A gradual, uh, over the years, going to sleep of the brain cells. I'm numbed enough now to be able to take you when we're alone. I don't listen to you. Or when I listen to you, I sift everything. I bring everything down to reflex responses so I don't really hear you, which is the only way to manage it. But you've taken a new tack, Martha, over the past couple of centuries or however long it's been since you've lived in this house with me that it makes it too much too much. I don't mind your dirty under things in public. Well, well, I, I do mind, but I've reconciled myself to that. But you've moved bag and baggage into your own fantasy world now, and you've started playing variations on your own distortions. And as a result... Nuts. Yes, you have. Nuts. Well, you can go on like that as long as you want to. And when you're done... Have you ever listened to your sentences, George? Have you ever listened to the way you talk? You're so friggin' convoluted. That's what you are. You talk like you were writing one of your stupid papers. Actually, I'm rather worried about you, about your mind. Oh, don't you worry about my mind, sweetheart. I think I'll have you committed. You what? I think I'll have you committed. <laughs> Oh, baby, aren't you something? I've got to find some way to really get at you. You've got at me, George. You don't have to do anything. 23 years of you has been quite enough. Will you go quietly then? You know what's happened, George? You want to know what's really happened? It snapped, finally. Not me, it. The whole arrangement. You can go along forever and everything's manageable. You make all sorts of excuses to yourself. You know, this is life, the hell with it. Maybe tomorrow you'll be dead. Maybe tomorrow you'll be dead. All sorts of excuses. But then one day, one night, something happens and snap, it breaks. And you just don't give a damn anymore. I tried with you, baby. Really, I tried. Come off it, Martha. I tried. I really tried. Whew. You're a monster. You are. I'm loud and I'm vulgar and I wear the pants in this house because somebody's got to. But I am not a monster. I am not. You're a spoiled, self-indulgent, willful, dirty-minded, liquor-ridden... Snap. It went snap. Look, I'm not going to try to get through to you anymore. I'm not going to try. There was a second back there, maybe. There was a second, just a second, when I could have gotten through to you. 
but maybe we could cut through all this crap, but that's past, and now I'm not going to try. Once a month, Martha. I've gotten used to it. Once a month, and we get misunderstood Martha. The good-hearted girl underneath the barnacles, the little miss that the touch of kindness brings to bloom again, and I've believed it more times than I want to remember because I don't want to think I'm that much of a sucker. I don't believe you. I just don't believe you. There is no moment. There is no moment anymore when we could have come together. Well, maybe you're right, baby. You can't come together with nothing and you're nothing. Snap, it went snap tonight at daddy's party. I sat there at daddy's party and I watched you. I watched you sitting there and I watched the younger men around you, the men who were going to go somewhere. And I sat there and I watched you and you weren't there. And it snapped, it finally snapped. And I'm gonna howl it out and I'm not gonna give a damn what I do. And I'm gonna make the damn biggest explosion you ever heard. You try it and I'll beat you at your own game. Is that a threat, George, huh? That's a threat, Martha. You're gonna get it, baby. Be careful, Martha, or I'll rip you to pieces. You aren't man enough. You haven't got the guts. Total war? Total. <sighs> well, she's... Resting. Oh? Yeah, she all right? I think so. Now, I'm terribly sorry. Forget about it. Happens all the time around here. She'll be all right. She lying down? You put her upstairs on a bed? Well, no, actually. Uh, may I? She's in the bathroom. Uh, on the bathroom floor, she's lying there. Well, that's not very nice. Who likes it? She says it's cool. Still, I don't think... If she wants to lie on the bathroom floor, let her. Maybe she'd be more comfortable in the tub. No, she says she likes the floor. She took up the mat and she's lying on the tiles. Uh, she... She lies on the floor a lot. She really does. Oh. She, she gets lots of headaches and things and, and she always lies on the floor. Is there ice? What? Ice. Is there ice? Ice? Ice, yes. Ice. Oh, oh, ice. Atta boy. Yeah, yeah, yes, I'll get some. Well, go. Besides, we want to be alone. I wouldn't be surprised, Martha. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? Not a bit, Martha. No? No. You'll try anything, Martha. Actually, she's very frail and... Slim-hipped? Yeah. Exactly. And that's why you uh, don't have any kids? Well, I don't know that that's, uh, if that has anything to do with any thing. Well, if it does, who cares, huh? Pardon? I, what? I, I'm sorry. I said. Oh. Yes. Hey, hand me a cigarette, lover. That's a good boy. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> now, for being such a good boy, you can give me a kiss. Come on. Look, uh, I don't think we should... Come on, baby. A friendly kiss. 
Well. You won't get hurt, little boy. Not so little. I'll bet you are not. Come on. <laughs> well, what if you should come back in and. Or... George, don't worry about him. Besides, who could object to a friendly little kiss? It's all in the faculty. <laughs> We're a close-knit family here. Daddy always says so. Daddy wants us to get to know each other. That's what he had the party for tonight. So come on, let's get to know each other a little bit. But I don't want to, believe me. You're a scientist, aren't you? Come on, make an experiment. Make a little experiment. Experiment on old Martha. Not very old. <laughs> That's right. Not very old, but lots of good experience. Lots of it. Well, I'll bet. It'll be a nice change for you, too. Yes, it would. And you could go back to your little wife all refreshed. She would know the difference. Well, nobody else is going to know either. They come together. What might have been a joke rapidly becomes serious with Martha urging it in that direction. There is no frenetic quality, but rather a slow, continually involving intertwining. Perhaps Martha is still more or less in her chair and Nick is the sort of bedside and on the chair. George enters, stops, watches a moment, smiles, laughs silently, nods his head, turns, exits without being noticed. Nick, who has already had his hand on Martha's breast, now puts his hand inside her dress. Hey, hey, take it easy, boy. Down, baby. Don't rush it, huh? Oh, uh, come on now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Later, baby, later. I told you, I, I'm a biologist. I know, I can tell. Later, huh? George is heard off stage singing Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Martha and Nick go apart. Nick wiping his mouth, Martha checking her clothes. Safely later, George re enters with the ice bucket. Ah, here we are. Ice for the lamps of China. Manchuria thrown in. You better watch those yellow bastards, my love. They aren't amused. Why don't you come on over to our side and we'll blow the hell out of them? And then you can split up the money between us and we'll be on easy street. What do you say? Well, uh, sure. Hey, ice. Right. Now, <clears throat> hello, Martha, my dove. You look radiant. Thank you. Well, now, let me see. I've got the ice. Got, got Martha. Got is perfectly correct. It's just a little... A cake, like you. What are you so cheerful about? Oh, see now, I've got the ice. Can I make someone a drink? Martha, can I make you a drink? Yeah, why not? Indeed, why not? Martha, you've been nibbling away at the glass. I have not. I see you're making your own, which is fine, fine. I'll just hooch at Martha here and I guess we'll all be set. All set for what? Why, why, I don't know. We're having a party, aren't we? I mean, you know, I passed the John. Um, I passed your wife in the hall. I mean, uh, I passed the John and looked in on her. Peaceful, so peaceful. Sound asleep. And she's, she's actually sucking her thumb. Oh. Rolled up like a fetus, <laughs> sucking away. I suppose she's all right. Well, of course she is. There you are. Thanks. Now, one for me. It's my turn. Never, baby. It's never your turn. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, Martha. You moving on the principle the worm turns? Well, the worm part's okay, because that fits you fine. But the turning point part? Uh-uh. You're in a straight line, buddy boy, and it doesn't lead anywhere. Except maybe the grave. Well, <laughs> well um, you just hold that thought, Martha. Hug it close. 
run your hands over it. Me, I'm going to sit down, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to sit down over there and read a book. You're going to do what? I am going to read a book. Read. Read? You've heard of it? What do you mean you're going to read? What's the matter with you? There's nothing the matter with me, Martha. I'm going to read a book. That's all. We've got company. <gasps> I know, my dear, <clears throat> but it's after four o'clock and I always read around this time. Now you go about your business. I'll sit here very quietly. You read in the afternoon. You read at four o'clock in the afternoon. You don't read at four o'clock in the morning. Nobody reads at four o'clock in the morning. Now, now, now. He's going to read a book. The son of a bitch is going to read a book. Oh, it would seem. Mm. Well, we can lose ourselves, can't we? I imagine so. We're going to lose ourselves, George. Uh -huh, that's nice. We might not like it. Oh, no, no, no. You go right ahead. You entertain your guests. I'm going to entertain myself, too. Good, good. <laughs> You're a riot, George. Uh-huh. Well, I'm a riot, too, George. Yes, you are, Martha. Mwah. You know what I'm doing, George? No, Martha, what are you doing? I'm entertaining. I'm entertaining one of the guests. I'm necking with one of the guests. Oh, that's nice. Which one? Oh, my God, you're funny. Race away from Nick, moves into George's sideline of vision by herself. Her balance is none too good, and she bumps into or brushes against the door chimes by the door. They chime. Someone at the door, Martha. Never mind that. I said I was knacking with one of the guests. Good, good. Well, you go right on. Good? Yes, that's good. Good for you. Oh, I see what you're up to, you lousy little. I'm up to page 100. And... Just cut it out. Just cut it out. Got on bonds. They're chimes, Martha. Why don't you go back to your necking and stop bothering me? I want to read. Why, you miserable, I'll show you. No, show him, Martha. He hasn't seen it. Maybe he hasn't seen it. You haven't seen it yet, have you? I, I have no respect for you. <laughs> None for yourself either. I don't know what the younger generation is coming to. No, you don't even care? You're quite right. I couldn't care less. So you just um, take this bag of laundry here, throw her over your shoulder and... You're disgusting. Because you're going to hump Martha. I'm disgusting. <laughs> you mother. Go away from me, huh? Go away from me in the kitchen. Come but on, baby. Does not move. Please, wait for me in the kitchen. Be a good baby. Nick takes her kiss, glares at George, who has turned his back again and exits. Now you listen to me. I'd rather read, Martha, if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. Now you pay attention to me. You come off this kick your arm, or I swear to God I'll do it. I swear to God I'll follow that guy into the kitchen and then I'll take him upstairs and... So what, Martha? Okay, okay. You ask for it and you're going to get it. Lord, Martha, if you want the boy that much, have at him. But do it honestly, will you? Don't cover her up with all this, this footwork. I'll make you sorry you made me want to marry you. I'll make you regret the day you ever decided to come to this college. I'll make you sorry you ever let yourself down. 
George sits still, staring straight ahead, listening, but there is no sound. Outwardly calm, he returns to his book, reads a moment, then looks up and considers. And uh, the West, encumbered by crippling alliances and burdened with a morality too rigid to accommodate itself to the swing of events, must eventually fall. He laughs briefly, <laughs> ruefully, rises with the book in his hand. He stands still, then quickly he gathers all the fury he's been containing within himself. He shakes, he looks at the book in his hand, and with a cry that is part growl, part howl, he hurls it at the chimes. Ah! They crash against each other, ringing wildly. A brief pause, then honey enters. Bells ringing. I've, I'm, I've been hearing bells. Jesus. I couldn't sleep for the bells. Ding, dong, bong. It woke me up. What time is it? Don't bother me. I was asleep and the bells started. They boomed. Po bells. They were po bells. Bing, bing, bong, boom. Boom. I was asleep and I was dreaming of something and I heard the sounds coming and I didn't know what it was. It was the sound of bodies. And I didn't want to wake up, but the sound kept coming. Go back to sleep. And it frightened me. I'm going to get you, Martha. And it was so cold. The wind, the wind was so cold. And I was lying somewhere and the covers kept slipping away from me. And I didn't want them to. Somehow, Martha. And there was someone there. There was no one there. And I didn't want someone there. I was naked. You, you don't know what's going on, do you? I don't want any. No. You don't know what's been going on here, around here, while you've been having your snoozette, do you? No. I don't want any. I, I don't want them. Go away. I don't, want, I don't want any children. I don't want any children. I'm afraid. I don't want to be hurt. Please. I should have known. What? What? I should have known. The whole business, the headaches, the whining, the... What are you talking about? Does he know that? Does that, um, that stud you're married to know about that? Hmm? About what? Stay away from me. Oh, don't worry, baby. I wouldn't. Oh, my God, that would be a joke, wouldn't it? Oh, but don't worry, baby. Hey, how do you do it? How do you make those, uh, your little secret murders stud boy doesn't know about? Hmm? Hmm? Pills? Pills? You got a secret supply of pills? Or what? Apple jelly? Willpower? I feel sick. You going to throw up again? You going to lie down on the cold tiles, your knees pulled up under your chin, your thumb stuck in your mouth? Where is he? Where's who? There's nobody here, baby. I want my husband. I want a drink. Well, you just crawl over to the bar and make yourself one. <laughs> That's right, go at it. I want something. You know what's going on in there, little miss? Mm -hmm. You hear all that? You know what's going on in there? I don't want to know anything. There are a couple of people in there. <laughs> they are in there, in the kitchen, right there, with the onion skins and the coffee grounds, sort of a, sort of a, a dry run for the wave of the future. I don't understand you. Uh, it's very simple. When people can't abide things as they are, when they can't abide the present, they do one of two things. Either, either they turn into a, a contemplation of the past, as I have done, or, or, or they set about to alter the future. And when you want to change something, you bang, 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 bang. Wait. <laughs> and you, simpering bitch, you don't want children? You leave me alone. Who, who rang? What? what? What were the bells? Who rang? You don't want to know, do you? You don't want to listen to it, huh? huh? 
I don't want to listen to you. I want to know who rang. Your husband. And you want to know who rang? Who rang? Someone rang. <gasps> rang. Someone rang. Someone, someone rang. Yes. Yes. The bells rang. The bells rang. And it was someone. Somebody. <gasps> Someone rang. It was somebody with, with, I've got it. I've got it, Martha. Somebody with a message. And the message was, our son, our son. It was a message. The bells rang and it was a message. It was about our son. And the message, the message was, the message was, our son is dead. <gasps> oh, no. Our son is dead. And Martha doesn't know. I haven't told Martha. No, no, no. Our son is dead and Martha doesn't know. Oh, God in heaven, no. And you're not going to tell her? Your son is dead. I'll tell her myself in good time. I'll tell her myself. I'm going to be sick. Are you? That's nice. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, listen to that. I'm going to die. Good, good. You go right ahead. Martha? Martha? I have some terrible news for you. It's about our son. He's dead. Can you hear me, Martha? Our boy is dead. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>